Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode uh, draws inspiration from a recent interview that I watched with Marc-Andre Hamlin with Jolt Bognar on living the classical life. So big shout out to living the classical life and Jolt Bognar. Um, he's been a really dear friend for many years. We met at the Sergei Babayan Academy. He had studied with Babayan for many years and I met him there and we became very good friends. And I was watching this interview that he recently posted um, with Marc-Andre Hamlin, and something really stuck out to me as a valuable lesson that I wanted to reinforce on this channel. If you haven't already seen it, just type in Marc-Andre Hamlin, uh, Living the Classical Life, and it will be your first result uh, in YouTube. Um, but I also wanted to uh, just highlight one point, because as musicians, it's so easy to feel that we aren't doing enough, that we're never enough, that our performance isn't perfect enough, that it's not expressive enough. Oh, we had this little slip here that I could have done better on. It's very easy to get discouraged. And I've posted some videos um, recently about discouragement and depression and struggle, but I wanted to highlight one point. I even wrote it down, and this isn't a direct quote, um, but he basically said, if you're doing everything you can to the best of your ability, that is enough. So there's no reason to worry to expect more or less than you're capable of. It is what it is. Trust it. And I thought that was so beautiful because we're never going to all be, um, <laughs> we're never going to be as good as the pianist that we aspire to be like. So for me, the epitome of piano playing is Sergei Babayan. Um, I've never met anyone who can extract colors from the piano as effectively as he can. For many people, it's Christian Zimmerman, Sviatoslav Richter, Vladimir Horowitz, Marc-Andre Hamlin, perhaps, uh, Daniel Trifonov, all of these wonderful, wonderful artists. And by the way, I've left out so many. Marta Argerich, um, <laughs> whoever, whoever it is for you, uh, it's fine. Um, you may never sound like they do. You can get pretty close if you're very accomplished and you can imitate certain things. And I'm not saying you're going to play the Opus 10 number 4 etude like Richter can. Maybe <laughs> that's a little out of reach for almost any human being. But, um, you know, on slower sections, uh, perhaps you can really listen and take a lesson from them virtually uh, and try to imitate exactly what they're doing. I actually love doing that because that gets me into the mind of the performer. Maybe even throw on a pair of noise-canceling headphones so you can't hear yourself playing as well and you can really hear them and play along with that. Wonderful little exercise there to really get inside their hands almost and, and experience the rubato that they experience. But you can get close, but if you hold someone in such great esteem and you can't ever get as good as they are, realize you are your own person. Trying to be an imitation of someone that you admire can help grease the wheels of inspiration. It can help be a catalyst for discovery. I'm not saying turn off your recordings by any means. I think you should dive into recordings as much as possible and really extract as much as you can, but then remember that you are your own person and you have something unique to say about this. I'll always remember an example that uh, my teacher, Logan Skelton from University of Michigan told me. He said, I was obsessed with the seventh sonata of Richter when I was learning it. And um, I sounded very much like Richter did. I mean, he's like, I don't sound exactly like he did, but I tried to do every little nuance he did when I was learning that. And I sounded pretty similar. And then I turned my recordings off for a couple of months and I said, oh yeah, I, I just know I sound so much like Richter. But he's like, being left to my own devices, things started to change. They started to become my own. I was no longer simply trying to be a carbon copy of what Richter did, but I would discover new things along the way. And I still, after a few months, thought that I must sound similar to what I sounded like when I was copying that recording. And I compared two recordings and I, it was vastly different. The music became a part of me and I started having something to say. I thought that was a very beautiful and succinct example of what a recording can teach you and how it can be a catalyst for change, but how you ultimately find your own voice in this journey as a musician. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'm going to leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to help take your playing to a higher level. If you haven't already seen that, I'd highly recommend watching that. If you enjoy the videos on this channel, you'll probably enjoy that too, because these are tips I use every single day 
in my teaching and uh, perform and practicing. Um, I will leave two links for my paid courses, which go even deeper than this channel goes over if you want a um, little extra help in your studies. And finally, I will leave a link for my kit, which includes all the gear in this studio, um, the lighting, the camera, the microphones, and even a link for the technician who I bought this piano from. Um, he restores uh, Steinways, Yamahas, a lot of different pianos to premium condition. It really is quite astounding how talented he is. So I've left his information. That is a new link in the kit. So you can check that out if you're looking to upgrade your instrument at some point. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.